Hello, welcome to another video of this SVA Design YouTube channel. My name is Shaquille Feldbaum and in this video I will actually go through uh, everything that I've done thus far and all of the thinking, strategies and everything behind um, my actual Lamar um, hypercar that I'm designing for the 22, my bad, for the 2021 regulations that are about to come in play. So um, the first thing that I did when kind of going through this design process is that I have this kind of some sketchbook or anything. Um, and because I actually do a lot of um, running time on like the project cars and video games with like the steering wheels, sort of like a halfway similar setup that I got here. Um, I kind of started to memorize the track and everything. So I just, from the top of my head, I just sketched this uh, track layout out. So I have something to kind of sketch on and to write on and to kind of give the track characteristics so that I would know how to kind of build a car around those parameters and everything. And also that in combination with the guidelines for the regulations, um, I kind of gave myself my own playbook on, um, you know the rules and the regulations to follow and also the design principles that i would need to build this car um so with that being said i just kind of just started to map the track out so here i have like um high speed sections from this corner right here up until this point right here and that is almost with exception of a couple of small braking zones that is fully full uh, full throttle and um, then you have like this section here that is a little bit more with corners and everything that you need a little bit more downforce for and um, you know that whole deal so with that also comes that in this whole section your brakes will actually be cooling because of the, um, the high speeds that you're reaching so the, the cooling and all of the cold air that will be running through the brakes will also be at its maximum in this section but then you still need brake temperatures for this whole section and also for the chicane so you need to um, really have a system that is capable of uh, giving you the optimum brake and cooling but still maintaining some temperature to maintain function um, then you also have the, the you know the, the track layout itself which gives a lot of high speed sections which means that you need a car that is aerodynamically efficient enough to go and penetrate air at 350 kilometers an hour without giving a whole bunch, bunch of resistance so um, with that you also need a, a car that's still producing downforce but you, you still got a whole lot of high speed sections in this uh, section of the track uh, so you need to find an optimum balance between those two so um, uh, let's see what else I got otherwise it's also raining a lot at Le Mans it's a very big track so you might have a section where it's wet in this corner of this track but the rest of this track is dry um, all of those type of uh, configurations also this uh, track part is very bumpy so um, you're also running a car 24 hours a day so you've got no, uh, and also with qualifying sessions and practice sessions and everything so you need a car that is actually damn near bulletproof um, because you don't want to happen what happens to Toyota they actually ran for 24 hours and in I believe the second to the last lap of the actual race or maybe it was even the last lap I believe that another two minutes ago a pressure sensor on the turbo field which is, which is actually like a component that costs maybe a maximum of 20 euros or something maybe even cheaper than that because you know it's a regular pressure, uh, pressure sensor and because of that the car couldn't communicate with the electric systems and everything and they had to stop running the car so uh, those are kind of mistakes and things that you learn from from other manufacturers and things that you definitely want to um, not take care of but you know take into consideration that you actually have to finish 24 hours of racing before you can take it into consideration at which place you finish so um, yeah that is everything that I've been um, thinking about so high speed high downforce nighttime driving so lighting um low spectrum c uh, low uh, speed sections suspension adaptability adaptability because the uh with the rain and everything you kind of want uh, different suspension setups for different conditions and all of that so you need to have uh, some uh, adaptable functionalities and everything within your suspension um all of those things that I trying to try to figure out and take into consideration. So here, I actually started to think about what I want the engine to look like and what characteristics that I want uh, the engine to have. And instead of showing you off of this page, let's now hop into the SolarWorks so I can, um, you know, give you guys a little bit more of a direction of everything. So 
Um, this engine is actually a 2.6 cylinder, my bad. This engine is actually a 2.6 liter, eight cylinder flat boxer engine. So what this means is that it has four cylinders that are flat on the floor and that have uh, a split in the crankshaft between um, the cylinders that are actually matching with another to actually make them go into the same, uh, into the opposite direction of one another at um, all times running. So what this means is that the engine on one side of the uh, block is actually in perfect harmony with the other side of the block meaning that it won't really cause for any uh, vibrations in the block or anything so um, what that means on the inside is that um, let's hide these components as soon as the crankshaft starts to rotate, the kinetic energy of a piston on the left side going in this direction is matched by a piston on this side going in that direction, the opposite direction. So um, as soon as everything starts to rotate, you can kind of see that all of the vibrations that would be caused by pistons moving in that direction are cancelled out by the opposite bank. So with, uh, what this means is that this motor would actually produce a very low amount of vibrations and vibrations are actually also the cause of a lot of malfunctions in cars because you actually get uh, smaller components that are start rattling around and maybe bolts can come undone uh, electric wiring systems can become loose from one another so vibrations are actually the cause of a lot of problems in cars so if you have your motor which is the component that starts to produce the most vibrations of everything if that is pretty solid and doesn't produce these vibrations then um, the car will become more reliable so other components can become maybe smaller lighter and all of that so to um you know to kind of keep these things in check so um with that being said i also have a compression ratio in this car that is um pretty high and in combination with turbochargers that are obviously gonna go under um this will mean that the car will produce pretty high horsepower at pretty high rpm as well in um and also with pretty high turbo boost so um the car needed to be capable of producing about 750 horsepower there was a max it was capable but with a car that is um going to Le Mans, i wanted a car that's also pretty fuel efficient because if you go through a fuel tank uh, as slow as possible then you also need the least amount of pit stops and the least amount of pit stops you need of course the rest time you can the most the more time you can spend on the actual race track uh and go for distance instead of standing still so um those are just some things that also over the the length of a 24-hour racetrack become very important so i wanted to keep the engine sm a size as small as possible but uh with things like turbochargers and these type of tricks to keep them um in high compression ratios you can still get a high amount of horsepower out of a mo out of a motor that is only 2.6 liters in volume actually so this motor will actually be uh capable of producing upwards of like 750 horsepower if some of my guesstimations and calculations are a little bit correct so um yeah so also what i did with the cylinder heads and everything is that i um put two ports for uh the intake and the exhaust ports um so you can also see that a little bit here and i kept them separated instead of combining them um for the exhaust port i'm actually thinking about combining them again because it would take the uh it would make the um the exhaust turbo feeding system a little bit better i guess i think this is a little bit over complicated and it could be a little bit easier if i just combine the two ports and back into one but that is something that um, i'm thinking about at the moment but i haven't figured that out yet but what uh, this does is that it does optimize the amount of air that you can actually push out of a system so with all of these ports with having eight ports instead of four ports for um every exhaust valve and everything for the car you do get more air to be pushed outward instead of um, having like one larger one so um with that being said i have not kind of wanted to go uh to the turbochargers and i already have another file open so um this is kind of the turbocharger simulation that it's running right now and um what i wanted the turbos to achieve was to have different characteristics at different uh rev ranges in the rpm band basically so uh you can see that it has two intake ports so this is where the exhaust gases actually come in and you have one smaller one and one larger one and um 
if I take this section cut out, you can see that there are actually like this uh, bracket right here is actually to mount the valve control to open and close the valves for uh, the individual intake ports to open and close again. So um, what that will do is as soon as this one is closed at lower RPM, you can close the big valve and then all the turbo gases will kind of rush through to the smaller one. And then um, that will produce a lot of gas pressure on this turbine uh, from just this chamber actually. And that would mean that, um, you know, the turbocharger would actually spool up quicker at lower RPM. Then when you get to the middle of the rev range and you still want maximum power output, then um, this one channel might become a little bit too small for all of the exhaust gases that are being produced at middle RPM. So then you can start to open um, the bigger one and then all of the exhaust gases will flow to this larger larger turbocharger section and then it would be optimum at that RPM. And then um, in combination with that, when you go to max RPM, you can actually start to open up both of the valves at the same time and produce max turbo uh, gas pressure um, on the actual cylinder intake as well. So uh, on the actual air intake as well, I should say. So um, that is also something that I'm doing with the engine and the air intake systems and all of that. So another thing that I've actually been doing for this motor is to uh, maintain all of the, is to keep all of the components that are actually producing heat. So the exhaust and turbochargers and all of that, um, and some of the electrical components as well, to actually keep those as high as possible in the car. So um, this way I can effectuate all of this heat directly into the atmosphere and um, therefore keep the rest of the components cooler and keep them in a better operating window to again make the car a little bit more reliable and to um, you know push the performance a little uh, limits a little bit further because if the rest of the car becomes cooler you can uh, try to put more stress into it to get it a little bit harder than it usually could be so um, with all of that being said all of the cooler components are also on the bottom section of the car so all of the engine intakes and also the cooling and also the fuel lines and also the um, lubrication systems and all of these fluid sections and also and all of these uh, fluids that will be running through the engine that you want to keep at the lowest um, temperature as possible are actually damper on the floor of the car because of this uh, system with the lubrication is actually also a dry sump so that is uh, what these things are here for um, the car has a very low center of gravity because all of the weight will be contained within this section right here and the actual floor of the car will be you know right here so it will be sitting very low from the floor um, and with this motor weighing 52 kilograms I, I just checked it, it should be 52 and you can also then uh, directly see the um, center of mass of the engine itself right now yeah so you can see 52 kilograms and the center of mass is actually right here because of the turbocharger will probably get a little higher and but then also go more towards the center if the other turbocharger is also in place but then again it will then probably be lowered again if i put all of the um, plumbing and everything for the cooling sections and the lubrication also uh, at the bottom of the motor because you have to think about it all of those lines that these fluids will run through um, also have a lot of weight to them because you know motor oil weighs uh, it weighs less than water does but uh, cooling and everything all of these fluids have mass to them as well and the area that they're supposed to fill up then becomes heavier if you have a tube that is like maybe this big and this thick that is full with water it will weigh uh, them two kilos if it is like a two liter tube section so if you have that sitting on the bottom of the motor then it's a, another two kilos that you can move another like maybe 20 centimeters lower than it would be if it would be at the top so that is why i'm actually having these cooling ports uh, also at the bottom of the engine instead of here at the top and also with these cooling ports being at the bottom they aren't as affected as the radiant heat that will be coming off of the turbochargers because these turbochargers would actually be running at damn near 800 degrees celsius maybe even higher so um, that would have like a, a radiant heat effect of, uh, across the whole engine and everything. And with this motor block being in between uh, the cooling inserts and everything, you can keep the car a little bit cooler than it would be. Um, and therefore you can kind of keep the radiators a little bit smaller. And you know, all of those things come into play when um, you're building a car at this magnitude and you're taking all of those things into consideration. So, um, was that everything that needed to be said on the motor? 
Um, I guess so. So it will also have like lubrication channels and everything for the dry sump and all of that. But um, all of those will be connected to an electric pump. So there will be an electric pump that will actually pump all of the water through the whole system and also all of the lubrication through uh, the separate system from the cooling and everything. So that is also another component that I'm working with. Um, for the actual gearbox and everything, uh, the gearbox will be sitting in this section right here and it will also have like, uh, it will be a transaxle situation with a differential and everything of course because it's a mid-engine layout. Um, and um, the engine and everything will be like a full support member of the car so suspension components will be mounted to the gearbox and this whole section this whole motor will be directly bolted to the carbon fiber motor that, I, that i'm building for it and um this monocell will actually also it won't really be very affected by the motor because this engine doesn't produce a whole lot of vibrations and everything so therefore you can bolt it directly to uh, the chassis without feeling it in the car continuously when you're driving so this will actually also become a little bit of a more comfortable long distance driver because of that fact and therefore your drivers will also be able to probably maintain focus a little bit better um, than if they would be uncomfortable with a bigger like louder more vibrating engine um, in their in their backside so that is also um, another beneficial thing for this motor uh, with the gearbox, we're talking about it. I will do a separate video when I'm actually done with it to explain how it works and everything. But um, I will actually rebuild and redesign uh, the Koenigsegg Jesco gearbox because they've tried to. Um, the way I explain it is that it's actually like maybe two gearboxes combined to one another instead of having, um, but also with like separate, um, how do you say that? Separate um, gear drives and all of that. But, I will show you guys later when I'm actually working on the gearbox to also explain it fully but that will be um, a pretty dope system to have incorporated in the car keep size and lightweight down and all of that and because it's a way smaller system than usual um, the diffuser section on the rear side of the car can actually become bigger because you don't really need uh, to you know keep it straight you can kind of go up earlier in the diffuser section because the, the gearbox now becomes smaller instead of it continuing on longer so um, that is everything with the gearbox uh, I'm not gonna say anything about suspension yet I'm not gonna say anything about like braking systems or hybrid systems like all of that will be for f future videos to come um, but what I do have here is a little bit of a preview of what the car will kind of look like in the future so um, design wise and all of that I'm not gonna give you guys also like a full description of anything but I can kind of give you a little bit of a preview of how you can expect the car to look. So this is my idea of a Le Mans uh, hybrid hypercar, you know, what it's supposed to look like. And maybe even after this project is done, I'm going to see how difficult it is to tone the car down a little bit to actually make like a road car design out of it as well. But um, that is about all I'm going to say and all I'm going to give you right now regarding the design and everything. But um i'm getting excited for this car and i want to also continue on a little bit faster and uh, do a little bit more content and everything but um this is a special one this is a fun project for me i'm learning a lot i'm um also learning about myself and about the skills that i already have and kind of the shit that i can come up with um regarding the engine i think it's some pretty advanced stuff that i'm doing um on this motor block so i'm happy with where it is but I kind of wanted to move on a little bit quicker if I'm fully honest with it. But um, thanks for watching. Please leave a like or subscribe to this YouTube video if you're interested in more content like this to come. And, um, you know, I hope that you were entertained and also educated at the same time. My name is Shaquille Feldbaum from SVA Design. I'm out.